Uh, well, bam. Oh. <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah. Your guiding bolt hits. I think a twenty-three at disadvantage just sneaks one in there. Uh, yeah. I'm just gonna do that at level one because I didn't declare it. So. Okay. Pew. Pew. All right, your your guiding bolt. Uh, you, you go over to its side where Celine is. You fire a guiding bolt, and uh, and it actually travels inside this thing and impacts the inside of its other side. And you just light up the interior. Um, you light up the interior of this uh, of the of this beast with uh, your your glow, this radiance uh, off of your guiding bolt. And um, inside, you can see. S stuff is written there's all sorts of, like cursive and scrawled words and and drawings and all kinds of just things in this in this moment where the radiance uh just smacks against the outside of this thing uh oh, i don't have an action to cast comprehend languages but that's what i intend to do next it's jasper's go <laughs> Uh, Jasper's going to stay where he's at and take the dodge action. Okay. Um, Jacob, we're over to you. Uh, this thing has a guiding bolt making it glow, so you get advantage on your first attack. Mm-hmm. That'll be useful. Oh jeez! Well, that, oh, wow! I just went on a journey with those rolls. Like I, my, my heart's beating. I saw a twelve, and I'm like, he has advantage. It's a twenty-four that hits. Crit on the second one. It's always the second one. Crit on the second one. Double ones on the third. Like this had all arcs of a play. Uh, <laughs> uh, give me damage here, as you were just. Oh, what's that? Wing, wing. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> eh. Only 26. Only. <laughs> Spider putting in some work. All right, Jacob. Um, you, uh, kang, and once more, you, you just get this, uh, I mean, at least for that moment on the second one, well, you're not getting the two-handed damage, but you just, uh, you grasp on or you guide it with your, your shield arm, giving it, like, pushing it for more momentum, or, I don't know, maybe maybe that black hair has, like, a big O piston in your elbow, and you just, uh, just... <laughs> no idea! Um, but you just get this extra momentum, and this thing doesn't... It has a head, in so much that it is a... A, a roundish, bulbous, uh, bulbous area on top of a longer neck-like uh, thing. Oh, well, it is. And uh, it it stumbles, and its its head dips into the water uh, as there's just uh, like a rumble and a roar. Uh, it, you know it, 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 that it's not it's not unanimated, but this thing is just beaten. Well, I mean, it's 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 beaten in uh, in uh, the physical way as well. Uh, but you, I mean, if this was like a severing weapon, you probably would have decapitated it. But this is you. I mean, you're a you're a car crusher. I mean, you're you do what the uh, the the mob cleanup people do. They put the corpses in the the trunk and they put them in the car compactor. Um, well, I don't want to end up killing him. I just want to knock him unconscious, if at all possible. But this is a metallic thing that has not indicated it has any awareness or sentience whatsoever. So it may as well be a golem, for all I know. Casimir. Um, the state that this thing is in, uh, after Jacob uh, put some work on, on this thing's head, and it is... I it, kind of literally on its last legs. If you do, if you do attack it in melee, you will have advantage on your attacks now because it's just not able to be uh, competent in combat. All right. Well, I'm still going to I'm still going to announce my Zephyr Strike. Sure. Because I want I want the extra damage. So. Great. Uh. <laughs> Wouldn't that be something? All right. All right, so both absolutely hit. Hold on. Um, and then you get a D8. Yep. 
And you also get 30 feet of extra movement. And then... Doing stuff. Mm. So let's... One thing that... Both. The one thing that's very interesting about, um... About so the Zephyr Strike is one, once you use the the thing, the spell doesn't actually end. You still get the um, movement doesn't provoke opportunity attacks until such time as your concentration ends, or a minute passes. Yes. Okay. So two, uh, you're, you're carving into this thing, and uh, oh hey, we're being raided by uh, J Man. Journeyman. Hey oh, no. Journeyman, welcome, and all your Journeymanlings uh, that came uh, that came along with you. Um, yeah, if any of y'all have the emote, uh, make sure you welcome Journeyman by letting him know that he sucks. And, uh, in the context, <laughs> that, that is absolutely appropriate, and he appreciates it. Uh, so, there we go. Uh, Journey, th hey, thank you for, uh, thank you for the raid. Welcome to all of you who came over with him. Um, and, uh, and speaking of role-playing, and especially some creepy stuff going on, J-Man, you, you're doing some good stuff with that, uh, with that role-play book. Uh, when I've been able to to, to pop in and, and watch you do some art, um, you know it's and your stories and conversation are are always welcome too. Uh, all right, so Kaz, I gotta, uh, oh. I gotta do something real quick. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Uh, because I gotta make a J. Jonah Jameson reference here and plug the book. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So for those of you who are not familiar with J. Man's work, okay. This is the first eh, piece I ended up getting. God Killers from Post Human. Better believe it. And the artwork here is phenomenal. And it's a very simple system to learn. And you need to end up here, here checking it out. More to ask J-Man for more details. There we go. There's your shameless plug. <laughs> is that the one that has his special art in it, too? The, I have two copies. I have one that is untouched. Okay. And I have hey. this one. With custom art done by J Man. <laughs> oh, J Man, you know I gotta pump you. Yeah. Uh, as bonus action, mm -hmm. uh, I'm just going to attempt to shove with uh, my shield master feet. Okay. Because why not? Uh, does that only work on larger, smaller creatures? I have no idea. This is like. Yeah, th Gantua? yeah. Th th this is a very, uh, this is um, a very large. I have no other action. Okay, all right. I just, I just smack it with the shield. Uh, Celine, you are, you are in extreme pain. Uh, any of your skill checks, uh, saves and attacks are going to be at disadvantage, uh, because you are, I mean, you you feel swollen. You feel like you're going to burst. Um, this armor, like, it, everything feels tight, almost like you, you're not actually in the suffocating mechanics, but it's just, uh, get me out of here, something, something's happening. What are you doing on your turn as you are in distress? Uh, it's just gonna have to be a spiritual weapon swing. Okay. Uh, so that, that will, uh, that will hit. Uh, so even as you're, like, uh, you're on the ground, you can, you know, you're peering up and you kind of... Give it that command. Uh, go ahead and give me the damage on it. 29. Oof. Oof. And your reaping scythe uh, uh, slashes through it, uh, totally collapsing the one side so that it's just like it, it's partially sunk collapsed it doesn't necessarily have a head uh anymore and so it really just has the one side that's the far side from you where it's, and it's just sort of almost like pawing in in it's some kind of like a death throw uh blindly kind of like flailing around as your scythe just has it collapse on its side the death of this Organometallic drag that has not been brought to you by Skittles. Taste the rainbow. <laughs> <laughs> All the shameless. Um, They're good. What can I say? Um, action. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe attempt to like. I can't start 
doffing my my armor because that's gonna take a minute without assistance. Uh. I suppose I'll start doing that, start just undoing clips to get a little bit of breathing room. Okay. Yeah, sure. You you're going for like the, the obvious like even if you only like pop a couple, that'll that'll get you some room. That'll do something at least. Uh, uh my poor my poor dragon. Um I'm gonna try and even do anything at this point? I mean it hurt I'll Mordecai try. <laughs> Uh, it hasn't even hurt me. I haven't taken damage. I, I'm, it, 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 oh, right. No. No, no not at didn't. all. I'm going to try flailing at Casimir uh, weekly. Okay. <laughs> that is super weak. Um, well, I was about to say something, but... <laughs> all right, Mordecai. I mean, one of the claws is, like, coming up to you, and but it's it's, like, so obvious and slow... That you can just like look over, and as as this thing's like dying claw, like from its other side is like kind of coming over and blindly getting you. You just sort of like can reach up and just go no, and just like push it away as it's incoming to you, and you just no. Um, and so it it gives uh like a, a shudder, uh, the, the whole thing gives like a metallic groan, a shuddering uh, gasp, uh, which is uh which is just like the sound is leaking out of it and uh it seems to go still um mordecai it is still kind of like weakly spasming like it's it's not it's kind of like the like it's good arm is still kind of like wiggling a bit um is there anything that uh that you would like to do to well it's your initiative so feels like a waste to, to use a spell on it right now. Um, uh, sure. Let's go with the rapier strike. Just okay. Ka-chink. Sure. <laughs> oh, you 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 have advantage on this. This thing is is in no no real position to. Uh... Okay, and your eighteen will still hit. Like it it kind of like it's, it's trying. Like, it, it claws a little bit at you, but you go up with your rapier. You probably don't want to stick it with the pointy end of this. You might break your blade, but you can, like, go up and with, with the hilt or, like, your basket kind of, bang, give it a good, uh, a, a good, uh, punch. Um, yeah. all right. For three damage. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, uh. Uh, yeah, vicious mockery. Oh, I should have used that, huh? Well... <laughs> You asserted dominance over it by kind of going up to it and cl clanking it with a, the the hilt of your sword here, and and just like a, a death toll, boom, it rings out like a, a bell, a wet bell, uh, as it again the sound just leaks out its broken side. Uh, anything else from you, Mordecai, or are we gonna go to Jasper? Sure, I guess that's it for me. Okay. Uh, and. Jasper is going to continue to stay where he is. Okay. Uh, dodge action, just in case. Yep. All right. Yep. Jacob, uh, this thing is uh, uh, like knocking it out. Mm, probably not an option given the state it's in. Um, you, you might be able to put it down, but considering the damage everywhere... Your presumed lack of knowledge about how golems or magical things like this work. Um, you can hold, or you could attack it. You could try go for a knockout, but that's presuming it, you know, you know how you could somehow help slip it this into not, unconsciousness. It has not uh, expressed any form of sentience to my uh, knowledge. Correct. This is a machine. That's what all indications are saying. Okay. So, much like a uh, one of those weird dancing brooms that I've seen mages do, you know, it's not life. Okay. 
You're gonna yeah. put it down? It's as alive as a Mordecai. So. Okay. Um, so I think I will have to assert dominance. Oh yeah, yep. Um, all three connect uh, because it is uh, it, it's prone and dying effectively. Uh, and you tong, no, not dominance. Tong, tong, this this death bell, uh, this uh, uh, sound rings out. And I mean, uh, if you want a death bell, I can make one. <laughs> and just more dense and the rings are the uh, the vibration from the body that you infused into it with your hammer strikes are the only thing that are still shivering or doing anything um, around it so uh, it is it is motionless and presumably dead uh, this is going to bring us to Casimir uh, Casimir it's it's still vibrating from the the rings that uh, Jacob gave it. What would you like to do? Mm. But that doesn't look like it's moving. No, it's not even like, hey, get out of here! Come on, it's it's just like that. That arm like went up and then sploosh. Uh, I guess um, I'll just ready an attack action if it moves again. Then. Okay, in case this is a a clever ploy. Mm -hmm. All right, Celine, you are in supreme agony. You've bought some relief uh, by uh, by uh, unclipping a couple of your buckles, but I... this is. Oh, what's that? Did I get skipped? I think I got skipped. Yeah. Oh, did you? Yeah, <gasps> I'm so sorry, Bright. I'm br Bright. Go. Yeah, you do, you do the thing, and then I will yeah. be in agony. Shame okay. on me. So, that's okay. Uh, so, I'm going to go ahead and use a Misty Step. Sure. Uh, and I'm going to use the Misty Step. Now that the dragon has died, I'll use the Misty Step to teleport inside the Wall of Force bubble with Celine. Okay. Very good. And Misty Step is a bonus action, so I'm going to use my regular action to start helping her take her armor off. All right, are are you going for like proper? Are are you going for proper uh, like buckles, or are you just like drawing your dagger to like snap the leather straps? Oh, we'll we'll do the buckles. Okay, a, a proper unbuckling. Yeah, yeah. I just want to help her get get loose as quickly as we can. Okay, that's very nice of you. Uh, I don't okay. Want to cut her armor up. Yeah, oh, it's a nice armor. Um. Okay, so I'm sorry. You, yeah, you would have done that. Now we forward through Mordecai and others. I'm sorry about that. So you are you're inside. Uh, you all would see Bright in there uh, trying to help uh, Celine in agony um, as Celine's trying to like get her armor off. Um, and uh, now we go to Celine. Celine, Bright is in here with you. Is like trying to unbuckle. Uh, you know, is is getting all the important uh, well, the, the next important ones. So much that as a wizard knows. Uh, what armor yeah, I'm, is. I'm, I'm going to be spending my turn, my entire turn, just getting the armor off. Okay. Um, so this is, uh, you know, one round. Uh, so Bright's helping. And in fact, it would be uh, Bright's turn next. Uh, Bright, are you continuing that? Yeah. Okay. That's all we need to do. Yep. So this is uh, four of, uh, four of, uh, we'll say, ten rounds here. Um and you see that with their joint efforts, uh, part of Celine's armor is like peeled back, and you see that Celine is pregnant. Like her belly is huge, and she's just writhing in agony. Like as soon as the armor, uh, like the armor, almost like boom, like springs off of her. And Celine, this is this is a a brief moment of uh, a, a relief of pain before just. Another, uh, and I need you to make a con, uh, con save at disadvantage. Also, please. Yep. Um, it's uh the if I've got help too, uh the time for doffing it is reduced by half, so it'll be thirty yes. seconds rather than a minute. Yes, correct. Uh, oh no. Okay. <laughs> I am concerned. What is this wall? 
Uh, we we need this wall. It's, it's a wall it's, of force. Yeah, we Why? need this wall to keep Why? to keep. We just we just do. That's all. It's it was to, to keep, keep her safe. safe from the dragon. It can come down now. The thing's not moving anymore. Oh no! I think we still need it. Oh no! Right? <laughs> oh no! Oh, I realized what's going on. Oh no! Right? Is this yours? I mean, it's my wall, yeah. <laughs> you can drop it now. <laughs> and oh, Mor Mordecai, we come back up to you. Uh, as you continue your, you can drop it now. Right, drop the wall. I'm, I'm, I'd, I'd like to. I'd really like to, but I, I don't think that's the right choice right now. Why not? Right up the wall. Drop the wall. I think it's been longer than six seconds. Yeah. Salisha, if I press the wall, just the goddamn wall. I'm curious as to why. <laughs> All right. I know why. Uh, Mordecai, is there is there anything you wish to do? Otherwise, we're on to Jasper then Jacob. Uh. If you have to I want someone, I want someone to answer me why. That's all we want for this round. <laughs> uh, Jasper's staying put where he is. Okay. Um, Jacob, this is going on. Uh, Bright put up a, a protection field around Celine and is trying to help her. Um, what 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 are you doing? Concerned with Celine's state, as now apparently she's pregnant. Um, Heavily so. Well, my sister would make a joke about her always being heavy, but um, <laughs> at this point, it, it, Jacob goes to the Wall of Force, like he, he's trying to find a, a weak spot, and it's at this point he, where he touches, suddenly become some black and all of a sudden the black grows into hairs grabs hold of his arm grabs hold of his body and all of a sudden he's pulled through yeah i don't think so oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> a counter spell or a counter spell has now dissolved the misty step oh. i'm sorry i can't let you do that jacob <laughs> what He's looking. He's he's not confused. He has no idea what yeah. the just happened. <laughs> you guys need to give him privacy. Uh, what? Casimir, what are you doing? It's it's your initiative here. Just a lot. Well, I'm not going to bother Lady in Labor, so I am going to attempt to start cutting up this metal dragon. Sure. Okay. Uh, you 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 platonically turn your back to uh, the in near instantaneously heavily pregnant Celine and uh, begin uh... okay um, uh, Celine it is uh... as far as I know this is this would be your first experience giving birth am I correct Celine uh yeah Okay. Although, technically speaking, what with the, the dream and everything, not really. Eh. Well, <laughs> you know... Best real experience. Going back to, uh, going back to episode one of this show, we had a, an interesting introduction for the characters, uh, where they were aboard a ship heading towards Mask of Horns, and uh, there was a lady aboard the ship uh, who was quite gravid, and uh, was going to be giving birth. And Celine was an excellent midwife. Uh, and, you know, through your medical studies, it's not like you're unfamiliar with the phenomena. However, uh, Celine, uh, it's happening. And uh, this is... Uh, How close is Bright? Bright's beside you, helping you. Helping... I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah, I'm helping. But unfortunately, this is what Celine would do. She said drop the wall. Bright's not dropping the wall. I'm sure not. 
Celine is going to attempt to force Bright to drop the wall. Oh. Okay. Okay. By way of a large amount of pain. All right. Oh. Uh, does okay. a 13 hit your AC, Bright, or what your clones? Um, well, it sure wouldn't hit a... I mean... Okay, so the first thing that happens is we roll to see if it hits a clone or not. Um, but I guess it doesn't matter because if it's just a 13 and not a 15, then it doesn't even hit my clothes. Yeah, this is a disadvantage because she's in agonizing pain. Yeah. In that case, nope, that's a miss. Okay. Yeah, it's just like, drop the damn wall! <laughs> Necrotic energy We're... crackling as she tries to... I'm really sorry, but we can't, we can't do that. We have to keep the baby safe. And C Celine, is, Celine is gonna yell out. This is exactly what happened in my dream. She's going to attempt to cut it out. Get through the wall. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bright, this is your turn. Uh, this this is the moment here. Uh, the I mean the armor has been sufficient. It's still on her. It's definitely not functional. Uh, however, uh, <coughs> you know you might need to give a quick uh, yoink to the uh, the breaches uh, in order to let nature take its course here. Uh, nothing too complex, nothing you, you need to roll for. Um, and so, uh, unless there's anything else uh, you want to do aside from, well, kind of becoming a midwife yourself, uh, you have moved in order to uh, free up... I'm keeping this PG-13 as best I can for I don't have my mature tag up. You've, uh, you've allowed Celine to freely... Uh, have no restrictions to giving birth to whatever is going on in this, in this weird cavern. Um, yeah. okay. Uh, so Mordecai, uh, Celine is, uh, there, there's no bottoms. She's in pain. She's very clearly, uh, in labor and bright is positioned in such a way to, uh, receive the baby. I am concerned, and uh, I don't. I don't know exactly. Oop. I don't know exactly what went on in uh, Celine's dream, but she sounds distressed. So I am casting Dimension Door with a six-level spell slot. Uh, Six level. Celine is definitely distressed. <laughs> I am getting in there. Yeah. We can't do that. I'll use my six level spell slot too. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and counterspelled. You can't do this forever. You can't do this forever, Brian. It it drop only the wall. It's only going to be over soon. It only needs to go for a few more seconds. Drop the wall. We can help. I wish I could. I'm really sorry. Casimir, are you still uh, whistling and cutting dra uh, dragon jerky off this thing? Yes. I, I am. I am okay. not going to bother, um, lady in labor. Okay, uh, how very gentlemanly of you. Uh, we're now over to Celine and Celine. Uh, uh, oh Lord, it's coming. Uh, this is. Uh, there is just this rippling pain, this blinding pain, uh, that you are uh, that you're experiencing, and I need no rolls from you. Um, you can just. Lay back and relax, and I'll take over the narration. <laughs> I mean, Selene is going to be trying to cast as many spells as it takes to get Bright to drop the wall and get Bright away from her. Uh, I mean, are you, like, fireballing inside this place to nuke yourself, or...? <laughs> no, I'm casting Guardian of Faith. Oh, that's fun. Well, I just used my counter spell, so I can't do that. Huh. Okay, well, I'm not hostile to her. She's I'm some... considering you as a hostile at the moment, because oh, I'm you, not hostile. you are. Well, the I'm thing on is, your side. Any... They're not. You're the, you're the mother. Uh, well, the thing is, I don't. I believe the concept of a hostile is dependent on what the character actually casts. Let's in the smell actually. Let's hostile. let's find out. As uh, I mean, this is this is only a verbal, uh, a verbal component here. Um, so you know, you being prone or or the like. Uh, you know, isn't really going to affect this. Though, for purposes of 
uh, you know, can you actually uh, cast this? Um, I would like you to make a spell casting check. So this this would be a wisdom check. Wisdom, wisdom check. Yeah, please. And I'm gonna set the. Okay, well, that, this a nine won't. No. Okay, so you you maintain your spell as you you go to say the sacred words and just ah, as, you know, as an involuntary scream uh, models them, and your guardian of faith does not appear. Um. And now it's what? Both the space, but it's respectful. What so, happens? And it's also in radius thing. So yeah, not. In this weird time, just again, Celine went from well, normal Celine, at least as much as you all might consider to be normal Celine, to this state in less than a minute. And as you're seeing, like she's attempting to cast, and I don't know, like Bright kind of goes, "Shh, no words." Uh, and uh, a a child emerges into the world from Celine, and it emerges with a full head of pink hair in two little floofs, and is quite small. And as the uh, as the bright uh, emerges and uh, and and the other bright uh, cleans away in this moment, um, almost like like picking off eggshell or something as it's encased. Um, it there are pink floofs, but you also see uh, scales. And as it's turned around, much like bright did uh, at the beginning of this. There are, uh, there are two blue, kind of almondy insectoid, uh, fey eyes, and some angular features that are a part of this, and the coloration of this, uh, of this child that was that had this kind of soft shell egg, uh, pulled from it, uh, is that of Celine's natural complexion with a bone white patch on parts of its body. Um, uh, though it, it, it has, uh, it, I'm sorry, it has uh, one blue eye and one green eye, uh, though they are both very fey in appearance uh, with uh, like angular cheekbones and some other features. And at this point, um, Bright, uh, Bright f like falls back, holding the child, something, a mist, some kind of a, uh, something emerges from her and descends down uh, onto the onto the thing and bright uh, bright your consciousness fades and as you fade and your wall uh, your wall is going to go with it as well this little insectoid bright Celine dragon thing uh, regards you all and simply waves before disappearing into the water. Bright is unconscious. The wall of force goes down. Celine, you are uh, you're in quite a state. Uh, however, you are most definitely now absolutely not pregnant, nor showing signs that you have been. The pain was real. But anything else that came with this is gone. The the corpse of the dragon, Casimir, that you were starting to examine and cut into, just disappears. All of you are left inside a cold, wet cavern. Uh, I I look to Bright. I I check her pulse. She has a pulse. She is breathing. Uh, she injured? No. Oh, this is where Mordecai goes. What the fuck? That's that one! <laughs> <laughs> it was well earned. Good place for it. Oh, I'm sorry. I mean, I'm, I'm unconscious. I, I, I'm casting Mass Cure Wounds because I don't know if anybody's hurt. Sure. 
All right. I don't know. Physically. I don't know if I've hurt or not. <laughs> but I could use those cure wounds from the last fight when the fish exploded. Uh, Selene, I, I should the the damage to you was was painful. It would have been uh, more psycho uh, like psychic damage in this case. So uh, yes, I, that's what I mean. I'm not hurt physically. Uh, I am going to. Oh, this was exactly what they needed. To, to everybody who wants it and who needs it. Uh, so, Celine, you take 34 psychic damage prior to the healing, and now the healing yeah. can be applied. I, uh, I was, I was, I had like 90% of my hit points, so I'm, I'm all right. Damaged, but all right, and I can just, um, I'm still awake, so I'm gonna use my last fourth level spell slot to just pump a fourth level cure wounds into myself as well. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm still checking, right? So I, 15, I, 15. So, uh, so I heal basically all the damage I all took minus four, so it's alright. I'm still at like 80% of my hit points, so. Is she waking up? Because I know this kid has the potential to wake somebody up if they're unconscious, if they're damaged. Uh, yeah. Uh, Bright. Uh, so Bright's face is smushed against the surface of the water. Really weird, but it happened. Yeah. And she kind of comes to, and Bright, you are conscious. Do I remember anything? Yeah, you you remember uh, you remember looking in the eyes. You remember, uh, you know, uh, having some interesting thoughts. You remember. Uh, Everything happening. So, uh, why am I lying in the water? I guess I'll stand up. Okay, you stand um, up on the water. You caged Celine, and she apparently gave birth to a thing. Yeah, I didn't really get a good look at it. I mean, it was like a Celine slash Bright slash Bug slash Dragon. I'm so sorry. Yeah, that too. I'm so sorry. I didn't. I would never keep you away from Celine. I couldn't. I couldn't control it. Something. I think the the other me put the whammy on me, and it wanted to relive. I don't know. I don't know uh, what it did. It put the whammy on me. I'm so sorry. Uh, I, uh, I'm, I'm so sorry. Right. <sighs> Celine, or I would never. Are you well, alright? I'm so sorry. Well, I'm not in any physical pain if that's what you're asking. Jacob ends up removing his you know, cloak and end up yeah, placing it to cover Celine at this point, give her yeah. some degree of dignity back. It's okay. Uh, I'm glad she survived. Right. Didn't know if she would. I thought she might not make it, but it didn't matter. I couldn't, couldn't do anything. Do you know what that thing was? Oh, no, I know it. I know as much as you do. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. We're going to kill it. I'm going to kill it. What? Find it. Find it. Why you kill it? Celine. No. Isn't the time for that. The, the thing came out of me. I beg to differ. I understand that. I am concerned for you. I really, really am. But this place is messing with our heads. Yes, yeah, see, look at the entire thing. Doesn't seem like such a, such a bad option now, does it? I, I, I just, I just, I just hug right. And... Thank you. Thank you for understanding. I was afraid you would attack me when the wall came down, and I still couldn't do anything. I, I, I it's... I'm not gonna lie, Brett, I'm still weighing my options. Selene. So sorry. We're, we're a team. We forgive. Especially yeah, if it was time. coercion. Celine, I understand. Don't get me wrong. I...
this place is messing with us. This place is messing with us bad. And right now, Celine, I love you. But you need to calm down. Selene is just a ball of conflicted pain, rage, stuff at the moment, so she's just like... She doesn't say anything, she's just kind of breathing through her teeth as, you know, she's trying to bring herself back to... <laughs> Jack crawls around and uh, puts uh, one of his blue fox paws on your leg. I he was... did it. I know it wasn't me. I delivered the baby, but I didn't make the baby. Although somehow it's got pink, and I'm, I'm a little offended by that, I have to say. Shouldn't be able to use pink. Jacob simply first looks to Celine. He knows that she... Give her a moment and then she might be logical at this point. She is enraged, just ended up going through labor, ended up having a head, unheard of amount of pain, and then immediately started screaming nonsense about killing her own baby. So he knows that right now speaking with her is utterly fruitless. <laughs> However, when he ends up looking to Bright, he simply ends up yeah, if taking a moment, studies her, and simply utters, if it's true that it wasn't you, that you were under the control of another, be blessed you had the opportunity to live through it. You don't give that courtesy to others. Ooh. And he just continues to go to examine the scene. <laughs> Celine is going to uh, try and pull herself up into a sitting position. Yeah. Such as she can begin slowly fix, reaffixing her armor. And... Modesty. Jack, uh, Jack speaks up. You know that's. It's probably not the last time that you're going to have to. Go through something like this. Not maybe you, Celine. What can we do to prevent it, Jack? Not be here? Stop messing with our heads. <laughs> it's not me. Then what is it? Is it actually not him? Uh... Yeah, uh, it, even with, uh, I guess, a disadvantage at reading a, a talking... Kind of slightly glowing blue fox creature that slinked out of Celine in a non non uh, pregnancy way. Um, he's speaking calmly and confidently that he's not the one who's responsible for this. Tell us how to counter it. Remove your brains. I can't really give you much more advice. This these are defenses. The, this whole place, given what happened, I, you're walking through. You're walking through the place's defenses. You're following down the the Fomorians. You just fought and traipsed their way here. If there's there's like if there's defenses, then there's a way to turn them off. I'm not the one in control of that. Then who is? You managed to turn him off by doing whatever it needed doing. I mean... Yeah, well, if you haven't noticed... It's causing us pain. It's causing us turmoil. If you haven't noticed, Jack, there's still a lot more that I can do. It's gone, though. Look around. <laughs> well, it ha that it happened in the last, uh, in, in the last uh, uh, alerted area as well. What was that thing? I don't... I don't know the specific name of it, though it was certainly some kind of a fae. I, I don't know. 
You're not helpful. You're not helpful at all. If you do, this is the best I can tell you, Mordecai. And, and he'll kind of pl 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 like walk across the top of the water uh, over to you, leaving like little shimmery, glowy footprints on the top. Do not come close to me. Whoa, hold up. I'm not doing this to you. I'm telling you what you got to do. If you if you don't want to fight against it, then let it happen. That's what gets people killed. They panic. They do dumb stuff. It amuses it amuses the fae. To just let that kind of stuff happen. Where you make Celine instantly pregnant and then give birth in the same two minutes. She never was. And it wasn't me. Even if I wanted to, I couldn't. Then what is that thing that's sitting on my mount? You look over and there's nothing there. Minus the... Well, the, there's the prisoner, but... But the, the bright doll isn't there anymore. <clears throat> it wasn't... It wasn't real. It didn't... It didn't actually happen. Could I make a favored enemy check to see? To sure. Find the two read. Sure. But uh, this is in intelligence checks. Yeah, you get uh, what advantage on this too, correct? Yes. Um, I'll do it as a nature. Uh, well. From what you've experienced in your hunt, let alone the things that led you to have these as a, a source of your study, um, I mean, the the Fey are they're they're things of fairy tales. They're called that for a reason. They're fantastical. They love playing tricks. Uh, they they do get bored easily. Or you know, if you can put up with them, then oftentimes they'll go away. Now, of course, there's recent events that have been happening where they're actually, you know, turning people into them. Uh, that wasn't in the fairy tales, but, you know, for whatever reason. Uh, you know, though there's different types of fae, they do different things. Um, Jack is absolutely fae, though he is also saying that he's absolutely not responsible for this. And what he's explaining is consistent with some of the tenets of how they operate. You know, uh, a lot of the, the more, like, kid-friendly ones is you'll get lost in the woods um, and until you uh, until you offer something or until you do something, uh, even if it's, you know, embarrassing or inconvenient or something along those lines, then they'll let you free because they got their, you know, th they got the result they're looking for. Now, given what you just encountered and the fact that he said that these are, these are like traps, like the whole place is on alert, um, these are pranks revved up in lethality um i mean th th this was lethal force bludgeoning you whether it was an illusion or not um you know jacob your arm i, I know that i'm talking to casimir but like jacob you know your arm still rings from that when it bashed against your shield um so th this is a this is a more lethal kind of prank this is a way that is meant to defend a place where if Orlans truly is at the core of this place, uh, you're, you're not going to deal with just simply getting lost in the woods until a couple pixies have, you know, had their fun making you, you know, embarrassed or like cry for mommy or something. Uh, Annoying but... blue fox has point. He isn't the one causing it, but we are intruding. We are, we are in their territory. So naturally, they will defend it. The Fomorians weren't exactly gentle in going through this place. You see all the bashed, uh, all the bashed bodies, broken things. They're they're likely to have tripped up every every kind of a, you know, uh, physical or magical trap that exists. You're walking in its wake. You think those are just gonna go away? So what do we do, everyone? We need to search for the mechanism disabled before we walk into another one. Because I am not doing that again. 
Uh, Celine, you don't understand. There's not a mechanism. This is just happening. It It's a part of this place. It'd be like saying that there's a mechanism that calls your goddess down to you in your in your in your temple. It's not just well, I mean, you know right. some kind of a lever you can pull. Yes, it, it is living creatures doing this. You you don't just turn off living creatures. You kill the living creatures, but there's no switch. Uh, I wouldn't oh, say yes, there living is. per se, but I I appreciate your efforts. Be quiet, tiny fox. If it's easier for you to understand us, then yeah, we're living creatures. I don't think we Celine. can take this anymore. So Celine, after fixing her armor, is going to stagger to her feet. Stumbling a little, but managing to keep her footing. Celine, you should probably take more time to rest. It's like, I'm fine. No, we need a rest. Jacob yeah. Simply... Probably not on top of the other, but probably on yeah. Someplace solid. I think y'all are making a presumption like you actually have time down here. I don't think you have that luxury. Tiny blue We've fox done fox. a tiny rest before and nothing happened. Let's find some place like that. And so I will him, what do you shelter. Mean? What do you mean, Jack? What do you mean by we don't have time? We've come to places like this before. We found time. If you think you can, I don't know if you have it here. I I don't I, I honestly don't think you have the time here. I'm under the impression yeah, that you're insinuating that time itself doesn't exist in here. A lot of things don't. That could very well be one of them. So if we sit and rest for an hour, to us, what seems like an hour. And that's presuming that this... I, I Look, uh, you all have things called hornets. Are you familiar with those? Called what? Hornets. Say again. Hornets. Hornets, yes. Yeah. Uh, so they, they live in nests. They're nasty little creatures, right? Hmm. All right, so imagine you just took your hand and you thrust it in their nest and you shook it around. That's what's happening. You're in the middle of the nest right now, everyone. This place is on alert. Okay, fine. If this place is on alert, we've got no choice but to either suffer through the traps, find whoever's controlling them, and... Penetrable. We can find defend it. They could be waiting for us when they come out. It's like if you put a... put your hand in a hornet's nest, and it doesn't matter if you're wearing a chainmail glove. If the glove disappears after an hour or eight hours, and your hand is still in the hornet's nest, then what happens? <laughs> then we have then we have three options. We either suffer through everything trying to get to the center, which I'm not prepared to do. We find whatever's causing this and kill it. Or we go back. With with absolute prejudice, or we leave. Yes. These are the three these are the can... three options. We so only Jack... came here for answers. Yeah, we came here for answers, but I'm not prepared to continue slogging through this if that's what awaits us. What brave errant adventurers you all must be. There's a difference between being brave and being stupid. Well, I'm very prepared to keep continuing if the rest of you guys are, but if the rest of you guys <laughs> think we should go, then I will follow. I will continue to end up going forward. The answers are further down, and we ended up here and coming in here with a purpose. Oh. That purpose will not be fulfilled if we end up leaving, and then they have even more time to prepare defenses or end up removing trails to follow. <sighs> Look, answers might be down there. Quite frankly, None of us know. Hell, 
Even by even by Jack's own admission. I can't tell you oh, what's there. I not even be here. I can't tell you how to overcome it, and I already have. If you push forward, you're gonna have to face a lot of a lot of things. It's up that to you, though. Probably should that we probably will have to let happen. That would be the quickest method. I can't always promise it's the the best or that you won't get hurt doing it, but if you let the if you let it take its course, it'll be over more quickly. But we're not killing each other. I'm not asking you to. If that's what awaits us, then we're not doing it. Death awaits everyone, even you, Mordecai. And and he kind of like goes, like goes like in a little in a little figure eight. I understand your condition. I absolutely do. But death even awaits you at some point in time. All of I'm you. Fully aware. I just want to hit him with the back of my axe. So oh, long. you you we have no idea how long I've wanted to do that, Casimir. You have no idea. Just. Selene so just kind of like sighs through gritted teeth and is just like, find a place to rest. You can put up your shelter. We For can as long rest. As we can. And we can keep going. We should just keep going. I don't think we have time for a rest. I think Jack is right. He's he's never exactly lied to us, and if he warns us about something, we should take that seriously. And most of us I've aren't been, hurt very much, I've and we're all a little tired. For that reason. No, it's but, more I'm beginning to run up steam. Well, me too, and I, I wouldn't have, but I had to stop you. But uh, I mean, okay. none of us are, are are at the top of form right now. But if we're not here to fight, if we're just here for answers, and we keep going and we know how to deal with the, the problems, we'll be okay. Just keep our eyes peeled. You know, I wish I had a gem encrusted bowl. Cause then I could, cause then I could cast Heroes Feast, and everything would be fine, and we could make merry and eat food. And... Don't want to eat anything here. Well, no, I, no, no, I would be Russians. making. It'd be making, including but, for. But, Jacob continues forward. Sure. No one seems yeah, to be uh, willing to make a decision, <laughs> or is he if seeming to want to debate more than actually here perform action? Jacob will end up moving forward. Jacob. Don't get lost, investigator. We all have Selene to go together. Go. This only go happened together. because Let's we weren't going up. together. So, Celine, Celine is just going to trudge forward. Okay. Investigator, J investigator still world. She's just like, yeah, as much as I hate it, he's right. Let's go. And she's just going, hanging back with her. She's gonna begin staggering after him. All right. And then before we break for the evening, um, as you begin to march to the other end of this dark, wet cavern, there are two more Fomorian bodies that have suffered uh, different kinds of wounds. Many are still similar to the stabs and slashes you've seen, though, and uh, their faces are also ruined, uh, particularly their eyes. But there's evidence that they were impacted in other ways. Which, given what you'd learned from Jack and your own experiences in the past two caverns, might also indicate that the Fomorians themselves had to also breach through these defenses on their way down. And you can... There's only one way to go. There's one tunnel forward. You can step over the two bodies that are somewhat clogging it up, causing water to kind of swell and pour around them. Or you can turn around and leave. I investigate the bodies. I will guidance him as he does. One of which appears to be a... Um, wearing the, the shredded trappings of uh, a, a merchant class person. Uh, nice enough clothes uh, such as they existed before the transformation. 
Um, and someone else is wearing the priestly vestments of Weejas. Two more converts to the Fomorians. Would this be likely be the Fomorian trend or created from the merchant whose store I happen to end up uh, grabbing supplies from? Is this is this the likely conclusion? Hmm. I do pay attention sometimes, Maddie. Yeah. Make a perception check. Nice, because I'm fantastic at those, sure. <laughs> very good. Uh, and Shukan, thank you very much for the bits. Um, as you're going through the... Uh, as you're, you're going uh, over the, the clothes and whatnot, you do find uh, the tattered remains of undergarments, and written on a tag sewn into the back is the person's name that owned the grocery store back in Mask of Horns. I take hold of my hand axe and I carve out the tag with the bit of yeah, shirt. Sure. Can't carry the whole body, but at least I have confirmation of one death. Okay. We, I'm sure the priestess of Weejas will end up carrying for her own, but um, there's nothing else unusual about the corpses and how they died. Drowning, for instance? No signs of drowning. Though, um... The, uh... Nothing else uh, comes to mind with uh, the investigation that you've conducted here. Then I will step over the bodies. Okay. And further down the up staircase you go in the wet winding tunnels of this Fey Hive. And it is here we will break until next Tuesday as you continue your journey further and further in uh, on the heels of giants in their wrathful pursuit of vengeance against the Fey, including Orlans, who is. Well, not just any pixie that floats by, who supposedly lies at the heart of this place. And you're getting ever and ever closer. So I want to thank you all for another wonderful week of roleplay. Um, uh, Lethality, uh, you have the Gathering of Nerds tonight? I do, yes. Okay. Then uh, go go and do what you need to do. We'll look for your signal flare. Though before you go, what is the level yes. and the prompt for your one shot tonight? The level is 15, and the prompt is Mithril. Interesting. Okay. Well, then... Okay, just wants to hug Selene. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Selene is now on the warp. So Selene has now... As you just she She's swearing a vendetta against the Fae. Uh, oh, and, and speaking of, uh, of uh, Australian groups that we raid, there's the Salty Dragon Tavern. Hi. Um... All right, well, go and do your thing, Lethality. Yep, like the metals, shoot on. Um, I'm going to get up and, and uh, I'm going to take a, a a bit of a break. I, nor I normally take uh, 10, but I, I might go a little bit longer on this break just to snack, eat, and cycle. Um, and if there's any uh, any things that the, the players want to bring up also, I'll do so on the, uh, on the break screen behind the scenes. So you all get up, do what you need to do. I think we're going to take at least a 15-minute break, maybe come back then for... Uh, we'll do some party games, uh, some Jackbox stuff while we're waiting for Lethality. So... Uh, everyone, uh, bye bye out there, and we'll see you. We'll see you soon with maybe some chips, salsa, or some other good stuff. Yeah, that was that was.